When I was four years old, making maple syrup on my grandfather's land in northern New Hampshire, I fell into a spring right outside the sugar house. And that was my first introduction to springs. They were quite cold, and uh, I've never forgotten that event. In my many walks through the landscape here, I've often relied on springs as water sources and as a source of discovering new things about the way the world works, the way nature works, the, the way humans relate to the landscape, the way species adapt evolutionarily to these unique habitats. All those have fascinated me my whole life. When I visit a spring, I try to be aware of all the life and the potential life that exists at that spring, how, it, how it's come to be there. Springs are phenomenally important as evolutionary theaters, as hot spots of biodiversity. Each of those life forms has as lengthy a history as one can possibly imagine. Springs may be the place where life originated on Earth. In addition, springs are focal points for the many cultures that have lived in this area over time. For the last 10,000 years, we've had humans in Grand Canyon. Their water sources have been springs all through that time period. So the Native American cultures regard springs as absolutely sacred places in the landscape. They're the only places you can get water and some of the minerals that are of such value to the tribe. Things like salt come out only at springs here along the Colorado River. It's a great delight to be able to visit a spring and see how much depth of process, multiple dimensions of life and human, human history and culture are associated with each spring. Being able to have a large number of, of essentially pristine springs in a landscape like Grand Canyon provides a learning laboratory that is unparalleled for such a wide array of topics, from economics to evolution. They are priceless laboratories of nature.